Hey everyone, it's Amy. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you ways to fill and seal your resin shakers. And most importantly, tips to make them leak proof. If you are new to shakers, this is the perfect video for you. If you want to learn the basics of resin and how it works, check out my Resin for Dummies series. I'll put the card up here. Alright, so let's get started. So first you will need a shaker frame. Here I have the ones that I've made using two part resin and a shaker mold. You can use UV resin but generally I prefer two part resin over UV because it's much more durable and it's more scratch resistant. Plus two part resin is much cheaper if you look at it price per ounce. Alright for the first one I'm going to show you the drill a hole method. Depending on the shape of the shaker, where you drill a hole is important. For example, shapes like this star and the heart should be drilled on the apex of the frame. Apex meaning the highest point of the shape. So for the star, it would be any of the points, the tip of the points. And for the heart, it would be right here. You want to fill the shaker liquid from the apex so that you can fill more liquid efficiently. To drill a hole, I like to use an electric drill. I recommend this wireless version you can get on Amazon, eBay, and even AliExpress. It's small, compact, and inexpensive. It also comes with everything you need, including drill bits. So choose an appropriate drill bit for the size of your needle, whether you are using a syringe or a needle point bottle. As you can see, a lot of resin shavings come out of this process, so make sure to do this step before you fill and seal your shakers. Then I'm going to widen the opening with a larger drill bit. This time I'm going to use a hand drill because it's going to be a shallow hole, so I need more control to do that. So basically, I'm creating a funnel shaped opening so that I can fill and seal the hole neatly and effectively. Now the frame is ready, let's move on to the plastic film. The plastic film is used to seal the shaker opening using some UV resin. You can use any clear film, including food takeout packages. You can even buy plastic films online, usually labeled as acetate or polystyrene. Now let's cut the plastic to its shape. Lay the plastic on top of the frame and use a permanent marker to trace the shape. I use the frame wall as a guide and mark it along the middle of it like this. By doing this, I'm leaving a border of exposed frame around the film. This is important, I'll explain more later. Now make sure to wipe the plastic off clean with isopropyl alcohol. Next, to fill the shaker, you can pretty much put anything you want in there as long as it won't get damaged by the shaker liquid. Depending on the density and the weight of the object, it's going to greatly affect how slow or fast they move in the liquid. You can use beads, cane slices, confetti, rhinestones, and tiny cabochons. Now, I wouldn't recommend fine glitter in general because they tend to either clump up or get stuck on the walls. Sometimes if I know the inclusions tend to get stuck on the walls due to the static charge, then I like to put a tiny bit of shaker liquid before adding in the inclusions to prevent that. You can also do this to prevent any of your inclusions from sticking to the uncured UV resin when the plastic film is tacked onto the frame. Now time to glue the plastic film onto the frame using UV resin. This whole process is very important. If you don't do it correctly, your shaker will leak. What's important to know is that UV resin is not a strong adhesive in general and both UV and epoxy does not stick too well onto the plastic film. 
The bond is quite weak and here's a demonstration. I mean look how easily I can just pop it off the surface. So with enough impact and force it will fail breaking the seal causing the liquid to leak. I've had a couple shakers leak after dropping them because of improper sealing. So to prevent this, basically the plastic film needs to be completely embedded in the final layer of resin. Now let me show you a diagram, hopefully it will make sense more. So here's kind of the side view of the shaker charm and the purple part is the shaker frame. The red is the plastic film and the blue is the final domed resin. Because we left a border around the plastic film, the domed resin can adhere to the exposed area of the frame, completely encapsulating the plastic film and sealing everything. So there's nowhere for the air to get in, causing any kind of separation of the layers. On the other hand, here's another diagram of what not to do. If you cut the plastic film right to the edge of the frame, leaving no border, the film is basically just sitting on a weak bond. With enough force and impact, the air will get in between the layers, causing them to separate and the liquid leaking. So I hope this all makes sense. Alright, so first apply a very small thin bead of UV resin on the frame on the inner portion only. Avoid getting any on the outer edge. Because we are using epoxy resin or two-part resin for the final dome, we don't want the UV resin to interfere with the bond. It's because two-part resin doesn't bond well to UV. And here's a demonstration. Now you don't need to worry about it if your frame is made out of UV resin and you're going to dome with UV. Next, place a plastic film using a tweezer and you will see the UV resin spreading under the film. You can easily spot areas that has any resin missing. If that's the case, press gently to allow the resin to spread to those areas. Again, make sure there are no UV resin around the border. If you see any, use a Q-tip and isopropyl to clean it up. Flash cure with a UV torch or UV light for 5 to 10 seconds before moving it for a full cure. I'm actually going to dome it with epoxy resin first before filling in the shaker liquid just to prevent the plastic film from detaching from the frame when we start squeezing the charm when we have to seal the hole. You'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. Now it's ready to fill it with shaker liquid of your choice. So you have many choices when it comes to shaker liquid. You can use water, glycerin, and colorless oils such as baby and mineral oil. If you are using water, I recommend using distilled water so it won't discolor over time. If you are using glycerin, mix some distilled water with it since glycerin is very thick. I'll be using baby oil in this needlepoint squeeze bottle. I recommend using this over a syringe because one, it's hassle free, two, it's much easier, three, it's not messy, and four, once you're done filling it, you can keep the oil in the bottle and use it again. Now, as you fill it in, release the pressure from the bottle every now and then so you don't build up pressure in the shaker cavity. Use Q-tip with alcohol to clean the hole and make sure to clean it thoroughly because any oil residue will prevent the resin from sticking. Now time to seal the hole. First, you squeeze the shaker charm slightly. This is going to create a vacuum in the shaker cavity.
While maintaining the squeeze and the vacuum, drop a small amount of resin in the hole. Then you slowly release the pressure slightly and you can see how the resin is getting sucked into the hole. You can pop any bubbles that rise to the top. Flash cure that for 5 to 10 seconds, then fill in the rest and fully cure. This method allows the resin to seal the hole all the way through rather than just capping it with resin. So you might think if UV resin doesn't stick well to epoxy, why would it be a good idea to use it to seal the hole? Well, here are my answers. Number one, we have increased adhesion by drilling the hole, which created a lot of teeth for the UV resin to grab onto. Number two, it's a very small surface area where it won't encounter much impact. So the likelihood of it failing is lower compared to a larger surface area like the frame itself but this doesn't mean it may start to leak over a period of time. So I can't really tell you how long it will stay leak free. Now the next method I'm going to show you may seem more secure and leak free. So the second method is very simple, probably much easier than the first method. This method is perfect for pieces that are clear and you don't want the drill hole to be visible. This is also a good method for pieces where the shaker wall is too thick to drill through. So pretty much the steps are the same. The only difference is you punch a fill hole on the film before tacking it on the frame. I use 1 8 of an inch hole puncher to create a neat hole. And you want to do this on the apex area. Then all you have to do is fill in the oil. Go slowly and release pressure from the bottle to prevent pressure buildup in the shaker cavity. It will most likely gush out as you get to the end of the filling. No worries, just wipe it off and clean with isopropyl alcohol. Then you put a drop of UV resin over the hole and quickly flash cure for 5 to 10 seconds. and then fully cure. Then the rest is the same, you just dome and seal everything with two-part resin. So that's how you fill and seal resin shaker charms. I know I talked a lot in this video, maybe too much on the technical stuff, but I guess that's just how I am. So I hope you guys still found it helpful and enjoy this video. And I hope there are no more frustration from leaky charms. All right, so thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.